This week, episode 318 of Stogie Geeks. In our second segment, we got the stick of the week. It is the 2019 Cigar Aficionado ranked Placencia Elma del Fuego. The specific size we're going to talk about is the Farmer. That's a 6.5 by 38, but it's available in a couple more sizes. We're going to talk about that. But first, in our first segment, Drew and I talk about principal component analysis, or known as PCA. Oh, no, wait. That's too high of a business discussion to have. We're going to talk PCA show. Why? Because my phone's been ringing. My email's been pinging. And listeners have been asking me their thoughts. Vendors have been calling me and uh, telling me who's in or out. Vendors have been sharing stuff on Facebook. And letters are flying around. And we're all acting like a bunch of high school teenagers over a trade show. So... Since this happens to be the topic of the week, Drew and I are going to the microphone. You want our opinions? Brace yourself. Stogie Geeks 318 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to episode 318 of Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Zempa. Stick of the week is our Placencia Elma del Fuego. I'm smoking the farmer right now. That's coming up later on in the show. So you definitely want to tune into that. And Drew and I are going to be talking about what we've been smoking in the second segment. But first, this newsflash, there are people who are in and out of PCA. And this whole IPCPR, PCA thing ha- is is getting way out of control we're gonna break it down for you we're gonna give you our opinions but before we do that i want to introduce remotely the little dockhead boy from texas who everyone and people call me and email me and say what's that kid's deal what's that kid's mm-hmm. deal is he from the industry i don't know he's a great co-host it's drew what's up Hey, what's going on, Joe? Drew, I am freaking... I have not been fired up more for a show since March 18th, 2018, when another host left. Yes. Okay? And I'm, I'm so fired up for this show because yeah. well, I'm so fired up, just to let you know, I'm going old school, college, Jack and Coke. <laughs> not even Jim Beam. Mm, I'm, 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 I'm going... I'm going 23-year-old Joe Hosempa. Here we are. Bing, bang, boom. Mentality-wise. Right. I might pay f- I, might, I have an event tonight, and uh, I'll pay for it tomorrow. But <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially when you got a four in front of your number. You, you, right. You know, you, sometimes you got to gently apply the brakes. But I can't apply the brakes this week. I have received emails, voicemails, vendors, you can't scroll through Facebook or any of the forums without this subject of PCA coming up. Okay? Um, we're going to have to talk about it, right? Uh, it's, it's the thing to do uh, as, as a uh, cigar podcast, for sure. And um, anyway, how are you doing, Drew? Doing well. I kicked off last night doing a 
first ever DAV premium cigars, one of the cigars we talked to, and we spoke with Ar- Armin yeah, yeah. Uh, late last year. So they had their first event here last night here in Grapevine, Texas at Bona de Brazos Steakhouse, and that kicked off pretty well. Got to meet a few people. Uh, people love the cigars, and I even got some trades. I mean, I got a uh, Monte Cristo Habano. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I got a Partagas uh, D uh, number four, you know. I mm-hmm. mean, people were just loving it last night. So it's great, definitely a great uh, event. Uh, looking forward to doing some more with those guys. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but other, but other than that, yeah, the the PCA man, that's been on, that's been on all week long. Everybody's talking about it. As I told you earlier, I told you my thoughts. It sounded like a bunch of you know girls breaking up with their boyfriend mm-hmm. uh, with the, with all these letters shooting around. You know, and and again, I'm just that's just my thought. Uh, Half wheel, you know, the guys over there. I mean. Their their title was the reckoning is here, uh, you know, and so that that just says a lot, you know, with the industry reporting on this uh, event that everybody's pulling out of that, not everybody, but certain companies are pulling out, you know, pulling away from it, sure, uh, to, sure. to 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 further their uh, you know their agenda. But I mean, I, I don't think it's political. I think it's I think it's correct. I, you know, so um, yeah, at this point. Uh, Let's kick it off, man. Let's talk okay. about it. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, <laughs> how much time I have? <laughs> how much time I have? All right, no, absolutely. Um, okay, for the Stogie Geeks listener, I'm going to break it down to you. That, 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 that's pretty simple. If you haven't tuned into it or if you have tuned into it, okay, we're, we're, we're going to talk two things, okay? We're going to talk business and we're going to talk consumer, Okay. So, because I really, truly believe that there is a disconnect there for sure, especially on the retail side. And keep in mind, this IPCPR, PCA transition is supposed to be a retail show. So, please keep that in mind, okay? Um, My thoughts are pretty simple, right? In regards to the last week, just to give everyone a timeline, last week, Four big companies had made the official announcement that they were pulling out of their booth space for the trade show, PCA, which is formerly known as IPCPR. Uh, when they announced their, the, the name change from IPCPR to PCA, uh, again, my phone rang, emails went off, there was some backlash on, on social media. But it wasn't as big as this, as far as the backlash there. Uh, certainly... You know, uh, vendors, uh, people have uh, expressed their opinion, both retailers and owners of um, cigar companies have said immediately, I'm out. Um, they verbally said they were out. They didn't formally write a letter. But now, let, let, let's look at this from a business perspective. It's January. Trade show is about to kick off in March. Obviously, in the cigar company, May through August, maybe September is really when blends come out with newer stuff. Cigar Aficionado kicks up their writings in regards to, you know, what's coming up new. Half Wheel does a whole report. Of course, you know, um, other podcasts do do their reports there. And, you know, I try to find what's new and just talk about it in the stick of the weeks and, and let them do their due diligence in regards to chasing in regards to what's new. I mean, uh, as a cigar consumer... Um, you know, I, 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 we can get that information via social media pretty readily anyway. Um, and also uh, with this influencer, not ambassador program, uh, what, what basically happens is, you know, we, we can get the information as consumers as to what's coming up, et cetera, et cetera, uh, there, and, and away you go. Uh, we get it. So, so let, let's talk about the consumer, right? We get it from Facebook. Yeah as opposed to going to our local retailer, okay? That's a problem there. That's a problem for both the show, which the show is supposed to be, it's, it, 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 it's, it's like when something started, right? And um, I can only treat this like a business conversation, like when I compare PCA organization to l- your local your local chamber of commerce, okay? And what I mean by that is what happened was people joined the local chamber of commerce years ago, 
right? Because if you owned a small business, you needed to buy group health care. And if you were a membership, and if you were a member of your local chamber of commerce, you can now purchase health care for your employees. If you were a small business, I'm talking five to ten employees, right? As opposed to calling your health care provider first and then going there. J just go with me for 30 more seconds, right? So the chamber didn't have to solicit for members for small businesses, bang on a small business's door where business has been, could be tight, cash flow can be tight, runway room can be tight, money in the bank can be tight, inventory of what they're selling can be tight. Does this all sound familiar? If we're cascading into the cigar industry, here's what happened. You fast forward, okay, and the Chamber of Commerce, you no longer have to become a member in the Chamber of Commerce in some states to get the group health care. So what happens naturally? Attendance goes down. Dues goes down. Now the Chamber of Commerce, any Chamber of Commerce, and just to give you a, um, a uh, the Story Geeks listener as far as like if I know what I'm talking about, this was a conversation that gave me a 30-day suspension on Business Roundtable Radio because they I got so much hate from the program director of, of listeners coming in and doing that, I struck a nerve. Chamber of Commerce were threatening to pull out sponsorships from all these businesses. They, they thought, you know, this is crazy. I'm exposing something. Yeah, I'm going to expose something. And believe me, by the time this segment is over, I'm going to expose something for the PCA as well. So I, I asked the Story Geeks listener, I'm sorry I don't have word economy, but please hang in there with me, right? So, okay. So fast forward, attendance goes down. Now what happens on the Chamber of Commerce side is they have to start fundraising for their own sustainability, Sound familiar? Here we go. Now, how does, how does that business model equate to the PCA, right? PCA, IPC, PR started out. This was supposed to be a show. Correct me if I'm wrong. And by the way, open microphone. If anybody wants to come in Joe, uh, and, and speak, Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. Anybody from PCA who wants to come on the microphone and tell me I'm wrong or publicly correct me of, of any things, open microphone. In fact, it's such an open microphone. We only do interviews at uh, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays because we have eight other shows that, that we're doing here, right? Um, I will make arrangements to have it done uh, in between those times if it's a member of the PCA to, to, to actually come there. So open microphone, Joe H, StogieGeeks.com. You, you want to keep me quiet? Paul at StogieGeeks.com. And if you have any hate email, that's Drew at StoryGeeks.com. Okay, so Correct. that's so that's all so so that's all settled. Okay, now let's talk about the PCA because now we have a business model put in place. PCA, IPCPR, and whatever it was called pre that was supposed to be a resource for retail cigar shops to not only purchase cigars at discounted prices it goes beyond that not only get the news of new releases and 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 and, and everything like that i.e on the other business model get healthcare information at a premium price to cascade the benefit over to your small employees let's jump back you jump back it's supposed to be a resource beyond discounts mm -hmm. and beyond news of sticks it's supposed to be a resources for for retailers to pool together and for retailers to exchange business ideas, do networking. This is what a chamber used to be. Do networking, talk about whatever challenges that the retail brick and mortar challenges that they have across the country. Because different challenges in different regions uh, present themselves. For example, where it's always warm in South Florida, you have outdoor seating, you might not have a winter season. You might have a population winter season, right? In the extreme summer, you know, South Florida becomes pretty dead. But right now, it's pretty hopping right now. But you, you have seasonal changes. What if you're up in Minnesota where you get five feet of snow, Colorado, et cetera, et cetera? They would come up with ideas and resources. And I remember all the way back then from the shows, these retailers would come in and get more information other than stick deals. And somehow, some way, it became a stick deal networking time, right? And I believe that the retailers ha had lost that connection to the show. That explains lower attendance as the year has gone down. 
that's been the reason why some of these big companies have been saying that they're either going or they're not going, writing letters and expressing themselves there. Let's talk about that. Or actually, Drew, be, before we transition from the retailers, because again, just to repeat, it's supposed to be a show for retailers to go there and have a resource, network with other retailers, be on the same page of whatever message that PCA wants to cascade right across the message, organize in un unity for the benefit of the brick and mortar. It lost his identity. Anything you want to add to that point? Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, that's, as you said, the whole conceptual idea of having a trade show. Uh, back in the day when I was in the customization, car customization world, you know, SEMA, which is a huge show, and the CES show, the Consumer Electronics Show, I mean, those shows were there uh, for not only product, new product rollouts, uh, what's coming down the line, new development, you know, and then also talking with other companies as far as, you know, ideas, uh, you know, how the market on their in their region is, you know, what, you know, just all these different facts, uh, factors that drive business and drive consumer confidence in products. So it's just, you know, and that's, you know, that's what our, that's what PCA is supposed to do. Um, you know, right now, I think that the internet is kind of taking a bite, uh, you know, from them because now it's easily to get uh, for a cigar company to just roll out information. But in the interim, that's when you got to come up with these, you know, fascinating or consistent ideas for the following year's show. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, you got to keep, you got to keep that interesting. You got to keep it. I mean, I don't want to go to the same restaurant every night. I want to go to a different restaurant. I want to go. And if I would do become, uh, if it does become a regular restaurant, then it's because they have a new offer. And it's just like sticks, our stogies. You know, I, can, I don't smoke the same stogie every day. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I smoke many different stogies. So, but to have that information, uh, to understand, you know, what, um, why that stick is, is coming out of their factory or what have you, just having that information in the retailer's hands, then into the consumer hands from there, it, it there's a whole relationship mm -hmm. circle there. So, and I yeah. just, I, I don't think that it's Armageddon for, for PCA at all. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that this is a pivoting point where yes. the vendors have had enough of, of the vision that they feel that, or, or dare I say, the vendors are upset about the c level of customer service that mm -hmm. the conference has been offering them year after year. And, and I know from my experience, I've had retailers purchase IPCPR stuff and deals before they even get on a jet plane to go to IPCPR, do their ordering and budgeting for, the, for what they know what's going to sell, right? And then they just yeah. go to IPCPR to kind of see what's new. Right. What about learning a new uh, business model for the brick and yes. mortar, right? Because let's look at this, let's transition, right, to and, and, and talk business about this, right? The brick and mortar has to put up all of the capital, responsibility, staffing, outlay of uh, inventory, all the different requirements, put it in QuickBook, deal with the division of taxation, deal with everything that, you know, liability insurance, everything that has to deal with th th that. And if they're not getting the level of customer service, the brick and mortars, that's why attendance down. As far as the vendors, right? As far as the vendors are concerned, okay, four really big companies pulled out. But let's look at the big picture. If we were to cascade this to any other business industry, I don't know. Let's cascade it to cybersecurity. That seems like a pretty good topic to talk about, right? It, sure. There is a cycle that I'm starting to see and that Paul has always said in, in that field. When a company's looking for market share, when they're really, really new, they go to trade show X, whatever trade show it is. And then they go for like five, five years or so. Then they take a couple of years off reorganize their thoughts and their or search for one way room go get venture cap whatever it is that they have to do update their yeah. product because you can't keep telling the same story year over year 
can't keep launching yeah. sticks year over year and stuff like that. So let's talk about it from a business perspective, right? These big companies that had pulled out, okay, they pulled out. All right, big deal. Then all of a sudden, we get companies saying, oh, wait a minute. I love you and we're in, okay? We're in, we're in, we're in. But not for nothing, if they attended their conference, they would know who's in. Yeah. So, you know, and, 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 and it's not very uncommon for big vendors, gold sponsor, silver, bronze, platinum, whatever the level is, for big vendors to pull out of any conference in any industry. Right? I, I, I know a gentleman who has an oil podcast, right? And he, do, he talks about the oil industry. I listen to it. It's fascinating. Because you, uh-huh. you, you, think, you think things in, 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 in like the cybersecurity we, uh, world are fascinating. What about oil? Right? Mm-hmm. Who are you going to sell it to? Can't just go to Drew's house in Texas and my house in Bristol and freaking, hey, by the way, you want to buy some freaking 14 billion petroleum barrels that we're going to produce over the next five years? Yeah, sure. Let me cut you a minute. You know, it, it, it just, uh, but, but it's, it's fascinating how, the, how those, those wheels turn. When, when they have trade shows, because I actually spoke to them over this week, when they have trade shows, there are some companies that are not there, big companies that we all stick our little nozzle in the side of our car and get companies from. So yeah. for companies to bail out of, a, out of a trade show that they feel that they're not getting any customer service, it's, war- it's the same thing when you go back to the chamber argument. It's up to the board. It's up to the board to say, hey, man, we might have, might, these are not my words, saying that they did. They might have lost a little bit of their vision. Let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's provide customer service to the vendors who love us and said that they're coming so that next year we can get those that are coming back and we can rebrand and recoup and use it for good as opposed to turn it into who's going, who's not going. Because when this all, because, you know, I, I believe the PCA executive, I believe they're an executive board. I'm not, I don't think it's an advisory board. I'm, that, that's, a, uh, at, that's above my um, research level. I could easily find out if I walk next door and ask. But whether it's an executive board or an advisory board, that's up for the board to say, hey, listen, these, it's been five now, big ones. Five big ones have, have, have bailed, right? These yeah. guys are staying. Why don't we use this to really, really use it as a lesson? Because if you were a business owner, local brick and mortar, cigar manufacturer, I mean, how many cigar manufacturers who we used to talk about on Story Geeks who we don't talk about anymore because for, for reasons that they never had this, this kind of come to Jesus session with themselves as far right. as saying, hey, right? The PCA needs to say, hey, let's really supply good, phenomenal customer service to the ones that are here, take it on the chin, and in the next round, in the next year, rebrand, not, not rebrand, reposition ourselves to be better and learn from the experience. If I was on that board, I would be like, this, I, I would be like yo, excuse me, I, 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 I wouldn't change any word I said on this episode. I would say, listen... There's a disconnect here. Consumer, retailer from the brick and mortar in their perspective, and the vendor. We need to get them all together, right? Yeah. And so they should use it as a learning lesson yeah. there. What I think is kind of crazy is that everyone is turning this into this media fiasco as to who's going. So if you're going, you're a good guy. And if you're not going, you're a bad guy. Like, that, that's right. crazy. That's yeah. crazy. They're not going... Well, they're not going because it doesn't fit their business plan, period. Right. And, and, and let's put it in perspective, and I'm done in the sentence, right? Look, they're not going because it doesn't fit their business plan. That's it. And let's put it in perspective. They didn't say we're not going to all conferences in the United States. They didn't right. say the heck with the United States. They didn't say, United States, we don't want your cigar business. They didn't say, up yours, PCA. They just said, we're not going. You're right. One letter got a little wordy um <laughs> from there i don't like to throw out names if you want names i'll e- you can email me joe h at geeks.com i'll give you the press release and you can have at it i'm not using that for for to right. to, to gain more listeners we we, we have a, a a pretty well-rounded uh crew who listen to us to the fact right. that i've gotten tons of emails not to forget your cigars <laughs> oh yeah that's right yeah. i've gotten emails all week don't forget your cigars don't forget your cigars 
Go ahead, well, Joe. you know, no, what I was going to say, like, you know, and, and right now that's one thing that PCA, I, I think they're just the inefficiency are there in their thought thinking is, you know, the value in that show has to has to exceed uh, the 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 uh, face to face uh, uh, meetings uh, with the retailers. You know, they, they have they, there's got to be a value to it. Yep. Uh, otherwise. Though you know, as half wheel, when I was reading their their uh, their take on the uh, on on this matter, uh, it's correct. I mean, I you know, if I don't have to drive to Best Buy, and I can get my product over at Amazon, then you know, and it's only because of customer service, or maybe when I get there, they don't have the product, uh, they're inconsistent. Well, then yeah, I'm going to go to that you know, Amazon and, and order it and get it delivered. I don't have to go anywhere, and I'm paying the same price, maybe cheaper. Right. I mean. You know, so that that happens, and then the other things that that I took away from that article from um, Half Wheel was the RTDA. So, uh, you know, I was reading about that segment where prior to two thousand nine, you know, that that model worked, and so what changed? You know, well, why did it change? Um, you know, and it just again, it just it it, it all you know uh, narrows down to. It's just that the quality, the consistency, the inconsistencies, excuse me, the inconsistencies uh, have gotten more, uh, it's become eroded every year. So um, I talked to a few uh, retailers yesterday at my event, uh, at the event I was at. And they were the same way. I mean, they were like, yeah, you know, I go to Set Cigar and I could spend an extra $2 on a $4 cigar I can get online. Uh, I would do that if the customer uh, relations was a lot more better. Right. You know, if they would, yes, exa- you know, and they would be, I would be there. I wouldn't mind spending the extra two bucks because maybe there's something there I'm missing out on. And because I'm not there at the brick and mortar shop, uh, I may just not ever get to know about it, you know. So that right there, when he was telling me that, he goes, Yeah, I, I just go online, I get these sticks for four bucks. I go over there, I get it for seven. But what kills the what kills it is that one I have to dr- get in my car I have to drive a few miles I have to go there and deal with someone who doesn't really understand you know wh- why I want my regular stick but then also doesn't have the education or the thought process to pivot me to something else and that's on the owner yes. Sh- there are some yeah. retail shops who do it well and it has nothing yes. to do has nothing to do with my relationship with with Dan Davison down in Queensbury because right. if I walk into Queensbury Cigar and Pipe in um uh out, uh upstate New York right uh go yeah. over there right it's right near Lake George right if 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 I go there right uh duh, it's in Queensbury because <laughs> it's in the name anyway Jack and Coke's kicking in that's good that means I'm gonna start nice. calming down right <laughs> um if I walk into Queensbury Cigar and Pipe and Dan Davison's not there the staff knows and i've asked the staff there and plenty of staff from just going to visit hey you know what about this what about that would i like this i like this blah blah blah. and that that's kathleen the owner testament to her you know her employees perfect example know Mm -hmm. that now i don't know if she puts them through a mini curriculum i don't know what 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 the bit but but they know it Okay, and if you walk into a local brick and mortar, I don't care if they have 40 facings. I don't care if they have 400 facings. I don't care if they have 4,000 facings. There yeah. has been a cadence of brick and mortar shops supply. They're pushing the consumers away. They're pushing the consumers away. I have conversations with with my friends. They watch Story Geeks every once in a while. It's my close fairest friends. The godfather mm-hmm. of my son. Okay, and there are plenty of times he calls me up and says, "Yeah, man, uh, so and so is having an event." I'm like, "Dude, I don't want to go there." Like, like it's like I don't want to go there. Yeah, but the you know you like the rep, it's a cigar company. I'm like, but I don't want to go there. Yeah, like I don't want to like I and 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 it's just like why? Because of the lack of customer service from a consumer level. So I know we're, we're talking about PCA, but if you look at it from a whole business perspective, it's kind of like mm-hmm. tears that that brush it down. By the time it gets to us, you know, we, we've all been bombarded by, by politics. We're all burnt out, okay? And yeah. you, you just get burnt out. And it's like, it's a business decision. Five companies are not going to a trade show because it, well, it's actually, I'm thinking now, six, right? <laughs> Numbers six, getting higher seven, as yeah. I go, right? Yeah. Six are not going to a trade show, right? Uh, it doesn't fit their business model. It's that simple. Right. 
And and okay, so then you have to reallocate, remake deals, make the numbers work, for supply, use that as a stepping stone. You know what yeah. I mean? I exactly. honestly think, okay, wrapping up the, this, I could talk about this for like freaking two hours, right? And I, and I got one more thing to add to all this. Go ahead. No, 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 go, because cause, uh, cause I had like a final thought, So and I won't forget okay. it, so you go. Okay, so yeah, like one of the one of the one of the gentlemen uh, that were at my at, w- was at the Dab event yet last night. You know, he he was talking about you know that they 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 are uh, ninety ninety percent uh, ready to pull the trigger that they're not going to go to Vegas to showcase their sticks and offerings. But what they will do instead is take that you know take that money because they understand that they've been going out for about five years in a row and it's become uh, stale. You know, sure. was the word he used. And so because of that, he's like, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and travel the country and just kind of do, you know, small shows, you know, for me and maybe some other boutique brands, you know, get together with those owners and see if they would like to get together. And we just do these little micro or pop up, you know, uh, events uh, throughout the city, uh, the cities throughout the United States. And. You know, and and just and, and get into the consumer base and get in, you know, with not only with the retailers but the consumer base uh, at their brick and mortar shop. So, I, you know, and that's again, that's forward thinking. That's you know, I, w- I was talking about the ambassador program that we uh, that we tout for McAuliffe, you mm-hmm. know, you know, and and so yeah, a lot of them like yeah, you know, we we hear that, and you know, we we need to get back into that as well, and you know, so that so that's catching fire. It's definitely catching fire. So. Um, but to hear that from these uh, uh, smaller companies, that that's what they'll do, opposed to going down to Vegas. You know, it 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 takes time out of their busy schedule, and um, you know, they, they it's a cost. There's a cost there, and there's got to be an ROI when they do that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that was that was a pretty uh, nice conversation to have in here. It's actually that, a great point. It's actually a great yeah. point, Drew, right? You have someone who's sure. just back and said, okay, I'm spending X dollars for mm-hmm. this conference, right? Yeah. And I can take that same amount of money and yeah, I'll be in front of less people, but I'll get more attention Yes. for either the same amount of money or less. You can't begrudge them. It's a business decision. And at the end yeah. of the day, we interview all these people over here at Stogie Geeks for years. Oh, I started the business because of passion. You started the business. You started the business because you wanted to make money. It's okay. It's okay. You found a craft that you're good at. Clearly right. you're good at it because your cigars sell. If not, if you're not good at it, then your cigars won't sell and, and we won't talk about you no more because you won't be readily available, right? It's a business decision. Right. I'm waiting for someone to come to the microphone and just say, listen, it's a business. It's a business. It's a business. This is what I'm doing, right? You take, for example, Mike Bellity, right? MLB Cigar Ventures, okay? Started with one factory, left that factory, went to another. Yep. It's business. It's not like, oh, my God, the guy who did roll the, you know, he used to be made at the Quesada factory and wow and all this stuff. It's a business decision. Why he made it, it's his business. He can do whatever he wants. If you don't want to go to a trade show for whatever reason, that's it. And if you're one of the bigger companies in the Keystone process, hey, you know, this all happened in the economic downturn of 2008 when big vendors started pulling out of stuff across all industries. Yeah. But no one, the cigar industry isn't exempt. And then by the time it trickles down to the consumers, there's such a disconnect. There's such a disconnect. There's, uh, us, uh, we consumers are like, I don't want to go to X retailer because I don't like the staff or, or, I mean, I've driven by places and see the car of the person working and go to the next shop because I don't want to deal with that person for whatever reason. And, and as consumers, we have that luxury. Same thing with the stick, right? We, yeah. you, you, the shop's going to uh, do price gougers. You did mention something in regards to purchasing something online for a couple of dollars cheaper than there. That is going to be fixed. That's going to that's gonna be fixed somehow, some way through, through legislation. When legislative gets done all doing what they have to do and then get to the premium cigar industry, that's going to be fixed from a level pro- playing field. And that's a whole yeah. other episode about taxation. Yeah. I'd love to, to talk about that because I have, I have tons to say about that oh, too. Yeah. But not for nothing, 
the theme is going to be the same. It's just the topic and the leverage of the taxation is going to be different. It's a business decision. So, and, and, and most consumers, if I were to walk into any cigar shop today and say, what do you think about this company, this company, and this company leaving business? Like, who cares? Like, am I so, does that mean I'm still going to get my cigars? Yeah. Okay, cool. I don't care. You know what I mean? And before, it would be like, oh, you know, but I think the PCA just needs to restructure its vision, sit down as the board. Maybe if they were really aggressive, right, have the executive board reach out to the people who bailed and make yeah. a deal for them to, to stay. Or if they don't want to come and, and if they're officially out, great, you're officially out. Let's talk about 2021. Let's talk about 2021. I, I, do, I do that all day, right? I do that all yeah. day. I mean, you know, I, 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 here at Security Weekly, for example, uh, uh, we deal with a company called Alphabet, right? And Alphabet just made a trillion dollar mark, right? Mm. Okay. And by the way, there's only four in the United States that have done that. And guess what? They did business with me in 2018, December in 2018. But they didn't do business with, with me in 2019. But you know something? I didn't say, you know, oh, the, I said, okay, cool. I waited three months, and I said, can I talk to you about 2020? And you know what they said? Let's talk. Yeah. I, you, you, again, you take it on the chin. Well, that was a dumb move. I should have went this way, right? You, 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 you take it on the chin, and you move on. And I just think it's getting out of control with the people, especially the people who are saying that they're in. Well, if you're in, you're going to be on the list of you're going to be in. It's going to be published or it's going to be sure. talked about or you're going to post it all over your social media saying, yo, man, catches at booth 3124, right? And booth 578 and booth 381, right? You know, because I'm going to scroll through my Facebook and say, where was that booth when I go? No, walk around. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's a, and 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 it's it's just a whole jumbled mess. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be. All it is 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 a handful of companies pulling out of the biggest trade show. I get that for the industry, but it doesn't mean that the industry is unorganized. And I, and and I'm not here to go poo poo on the PCA either. They use it as use it as a learning experience. You, yep. you use it as a learning experience, wh what happened, why you lost the deal, okay, right? Why you lost the deal, and then create something to, 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 to get the deal. They didn't say they're never going again. They said, we ain't going to 2020 show. Maybe they're making a stance to prove a point. And just maybe if the executive board had some... Really good closes on there. By the way, you can uh, email me for a consultation. I, I, I will go to all the five companies and negotiate that there. Uh, Joe H. at StoyGeeks.com. I'll negotiate a deal with, with, with them to stay at the trade show. Why not? Right? Yeah. And, and maybe they create curriculum in between those big companies, right? Curriculum to help the brick and mortar. Take that information, go down to their employees, back to their hometown, and yeah. use that information to, I don't know, make money and sell cigars. Right. That's right. I mean, I, I, I would be like, yeah, I'd be like, uh, the first thing I would say is, hey, yeah, sure. You want to come back? I want a curriculum. Yeah. Right. And now if I, if I were on the board, I would be like, we shouldn't let anybody back unless they have some sort of a curriculum. And what do I mean by curriculum? A paragraph, goal, execution, and strategy. Right. What's the goal of IPCPR? Oh, I'm sorry. What's the goal of PCA, right? Yep. What's your execution and what's your strategy in each booth? Is that right. too much to ask? I mean, you kind of give it to really smart high school children taking an economics class, right? And you learn that in college. For sure. And, and again, I don't want to go poo-poo on anybody. I don't want to, but I think that it's just getting way out of hand. And there you go. I think, do you want to leave it right there? No, as I said, do you think we'll get invited? <laughs> I've been invited, again, but true. Phenomenal question. Ever since I started Story Geeks, me, 
Stoy Geeks, January 2nd of 2017, I have been invited to IPCPR by all of our vendors. In fact, I've been invited to film Stogie Geeks in the Drew Estate booth. Yeah. 2018. I'm thinking of the year. 2018. 2017. I was asked, right? Or we. I should say we. I shouldn't say I, Joe Zempa. Stogie Geeks Umbrella. Stogie yeah. Geeks Umbrella was asked to, hey, you want to do something with General? Go there, interview some people, bing, bang, boom. That'd be great. Blah, 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 blah. 2017, General. Okay? Yeah. 2019, we were asked by uh, Adria J.C. Newman. Yeah. Right? Hey, why don't you come down, whatever you want. They been asked me to go down to the factory. Yeah. And for us, us to go down to the factory, and we are. Okay? I didn't yeah, do yeah. it in 2018, leading into 2019. It wasn't part of Story Geeks' business plan. Right. It's that simple. It wasn't. The heck with you, Drew. The heck with you, Altaris. I mean, General. The heck with yeah. you. The heck with you, uh, uh, JC. It was not like that at all. It was a business decision. Because I remember right. saying, yeah. hey, Paul, guess what? We, and I told him what I just told you. And he says, well, if you want to go, that's cool. And, and I'm thinking about yeah. it. And I'm like, what am I going to do there? I'm going to interview people that right. email us on a constant basis to be interviewed. Sure. And, you know, Conradery, I mean, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a host of, 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 a, of, 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 of a, uh, a player in the uh, cigar podcast world. You're, we are. you're the host and a player in the cigar cast world. Like, that's not uh, what, what I don't even think, personally, business wise, I don't even think podcasts should be there. Yeah. Because we're a subscription, it's a digital either audio or video, right? A subscription for people, for consumers, to listen to and get stuff. Why, why are we going to bombard it with that? You know what I mean? And, 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 and I can see the point of going, yeah. but it just wasn't part of the business plan. And then in 2019, it became a bandwidth issue when, you know, yeah. I, by the birth of my son in, in <laughs> first year was a, was a well, you know, I don't even remember half the episodes I did on Story Geeks. I'm only kidding. You know what I mean? But, right. but it's like, it was a business issue. It wasn't like anything like that. No, and, I know that. You know, people keep ask, people ask me last night, you guys, do you guys go to those shows? I'm like, I haven't been there uh, with our show, but um, I've been by there a couple times mm. in the past, but I have not been there you know, recently. I, 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 I've been to, uh, you know, uh, smokes and, and, and stuff like that. And yeah. I mean, you know, God, I remember, I, I think it's called the Bond Burner or the Bond thing. It's the Jewish yeah. State Bond thing. Jewish it's in State. Connecticut. Yeah. So yeah. after we declined, I, they, they said, you want to come down? You want to come yeah. down? People can't get into that show. People are, like, trading tickets online, trying to get into the show. Oh, then they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah man, you want to come down? Just, uh, ju ju just let us know so, so, so we have a space for you and the production crew yeah. to go down. And, again, it's like that's your chance to shine. That's your chance to sign. I, I have no problem interviewing anyone from Drew Estate, Joe H at StoryGeeks.com, Paul at StoryGeeks.com, Drew at StoryGeeks.com. Email us yeah. to set up a date on a Friday, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's that simple. Yeah. We have an open mic. I've said we have an open mic every year. So, so why, to go there, to do what? To watch people raffle and, and stand in line to take a picture with, 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 with the, the crew, Willie right. and, and Drew? Yeah, that, that, that's their gig. Right. That's their gig. My gig, or our gig, right? I don't want to keep talking like I'm alone, right? I'm sorry, I'm not getting used to being with someone, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, you know, right. Uh, our gig, flash us an email, we'll set up a thing, we'll talk about your cigar company. It's that simple. Right. That's our gig. And then the next segment, which we got to get to pretty soon, right? Yeah. The next segment, we talk about sticks we've been smoking and we rate them. It, it, yeah. It's pretty simple. That's our business model. That's really? what we do. We stick, we stick pretty close to it. You know what I mean? And and it's just it's just crazy. I just think that as the years progressed, and I honestly think in defense of the PCA, the board woke up after this and the board got shook up and said, Wow, we, we really need to 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 do something because as years go by and years fly by for everybody, right? Yeah. Everybody's got other stuff to do besides sit around and do smoke cigars, right? Even though we make it sound like that, but you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. 
there's a gap between the retailer and the PCA. There's a gap between the manufacturers and, or companies and PCA. There's a creativity gap and, a, and an educational gap between the retailers and creators of the company and the consumers. That, that, that's evident, right? And then there's right. a gap, a huge gap between the retailers and the consumers. And all they got to do is come up with a business strategy to close those gaps. It's not going to be overnight. But when they close those gaps and they align as quickly as possible, as effectively as possible, provide phenomenal customer service, guess what's going to happen? Attendance is going to go up. There's going to oh, be yeah. no question on boot space. And people are going to move on with their lives. Oh, yeah. Anything Just, else? No, I, I mean, you hit the head, you hit the head on the nail. So, and... You know, like I said last night at the uh, DAV event, you know, it was it was great to talk with these customers uh, of of the brick and mortar uh, world and understand their issues, and now to take those, you know, and, and use me as a vehicle and present those to the brick and mortar shops when I go visit them, and just kind of let them know, you know, what I hear and you know, and be honest, you know, be very honest with them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because that to me will definitely build. Uh, the confidence uh, of their sales, you know, um, and, and and move forward. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Like I said, I'm not here to go poo-poo on anyone. I'm just here no. to lay down the thing. I just think the letters need to stop. Like, and, and, and the sharing of the letters need to stop. Because when I see it, I'm just like, oh, really? Like, why? Like, what? Like, you, you, when you put out a letter as a company, just to let the story geek in, in there, and, and Drew, correct me if I'm wrong, you've done business transactions as well, sure. right? Uh, yes. You know, you, 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 you sit down as a group and you write your formal letter. And we're like, by God, it, we're going. And we're letting them know that we are totally in love with you. Really? Like, <laughs> like. You're going. You pay the fee, you go. Same yeah. thing as the consumers or the retailers. You pay the fee, you go. You don't go, you don't go. Maybe there might be a new sort of competitor to PCA. What if that happened in this, in this beautiful country that we call the U.S. of A? What if that That's happened? Right. A bunch of, a bunch of what, what if the top four said, you know something, we're going to do our own thing, and we're not going to let anybody in. How about that? Yeah. How about that? And not only that, we're going to have educational seminars for the retailers about our stuff. And we're only going to let retailers in. And we don't want anybody else, but they could do that. They could pull that off financially. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And have their own conference and then have it build the competitions. I'm not suggesting that that's a great idea. That's why the PCA needs to really, really bring them to the table. Yes. You know what I mean? Or... Just admit, it's a business decision. Talk 2021 with them. If I was president, PCA, or executive director, or whatever the title is, I would be like on the phone with them, I understand your position in 2020. You certainly raised an eyebrow. We understand yeah. your, your points. However, can you do me a favor? Three months after this, week's, uh, this year's show, can I meet with you on an individual basis, talk to you about some of the points, and yeah. I, and, and I want to fix it. I want to fix it for 2021. And you know something? I want to make this show a resource again. I want to make this show a resource again for the retailers and educate the retailers about all the different things that can happen. I don't want it to be people going around to get free swag. Right. You know what I mean? I don't want people going around to get free sticks. And by the way, those guys that do the podcast thing, <laughs> why don't you email them and set up an appointment on their show? Right. Just make, exactly. sure, just make sure you, you email Joe H. Story Geeks first if you want to talk business. <laughs> if you want to play around, go to the other ones and come here. Either way, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're talking about the Placencia Elma del Fuego okay. and what we've been smoking. 